This episode is going to be awesome because we will use the camera selector created in the previous episode and associate it with the joystick control and also a preset recall. So follow me on this. We will first go to the training layer and on the training layer, let's just zoom out a little bit. We will hold down shift and mark across the joystick here to select these and then we'll create new behaviors on the training layer. So that would be left, right, up, down, rotate, top button. By the way, these labels are coming from the raw panel definition of the PTC fly. So uh, they, they could be different and changed. Um, you could also create these manually. If you go to the layer here, then there's the uh, possibility of creating behaviors yourself by the names you choose or the, or the, um, the we call them keys or um, aliases that you choose in this case. I will strongly not recommend that because if you do it this way, then automatically we also get the key mapping in place. Just to remind you, because we talked about key maps in the first video, if you click on key map, this is where the, the, um, uh, the aliases that any of these components have gets associated with the actual component number, hardware component number on panel number one or panel number two, etc. So this mapping is very essential to get right. If it's, if it's not done right, it gets either it floats into outer space or it gets onto the wrong button and so on. We are going to touch a little bit on that at the end of this series in training so that you understand it more and see how we can use this configuration and apply on different controller. Right now, I just want you to follow along and do it this way. Sorry for the detour. Let's go to this behavior and then press edit. Now, we will pick a control of one of these cameras, but instead of selecting a specific camera, because that will include the device ID, which is one here and two over here. And that is both on the Canon XC um, device core. We will pick this one, select core advanced. Okay. And as we do so, then we'll see that inside this field, we can now pick camera select, the variable camera select to define which of the two cameras are we going to use. ID number one or ID number two. I want to invite you to see what is going on up here in this window. It, it, this is called the IO reference. That actually is a string. It has a little bit the format of a URL that you know from your web browser up here. It says DC colon means device core. Canon dash XC is the name of the device core. Variable colon or var colon camera select is a reference to the camera select variable we have created instead of using a literal value, which is what we have done before. Maybe we'll see that in a moment. And now finally, we'll be picking the parameter name. So let's choose pan, pan speed maybe, pan speed. And that gets inserted here, the actual name of it, not the friendly name, but the operational name, the key, the, um, the name that we need for this one. Okay, guys, this means that when we, when we use pan speed on the left, right dimension of the joystick, it's going to control the camera selected by the variable camera select. Let's just do this for the others as well. Okay. So we'll pick this one, the up down, and then we'll do the same. We can now press this one to load the previous definition of this. So you see by loading previous, it inserts the same device call reference. Oh, sorry, IO reference. It's late. Sorry. Um, and then I will just type in tilt speed here. Okay. Like that. There we go. Then I'll take the rotate dimension of the joystick. This is associated with zoom load previous. I'll go down here, type zoom speed. Whoops. There we go. And then finally, on the top bottom uh, button, I could uh, do something else. And in this case, yeah, I could load previous and it would then also select my camera. But instead of zoom speed, I want to associate like a preset recall. So preset, oh, there's so many parameters we have implemented here. So preset recall there, and then we'll put in a literal value like preset number one. That's what you get when you press the top of the joystick. Okay. 
But in these cases, they are all associated with the camera that we selected. Now let's go to the point where we can prove this. So we will um, just bring up our cameras here. Let's just reload these pages so we can see the cameras. And then let's find our controller here. It is asleep. So let's just press something to make it wake up. Let's uh, see if we can have this controller wake up and be associated with our products. I think my computer changed IP somehow, maybe Wi-Fi versus something else, because at least my emulated panel changed its IP over to this one. So this is now connected and we should have these all safely in place. Yes, thank you. Okay, so on my emulated panel here, which maybe I could make a little bit smaller like that, we have now camera number one selected. Let's try the joystick by pressing the top button. Okay, camera number one is over here. It recalled its position. Let's try camera number two. What happens if I press this one? It goes to some preset, like crazy preset, preset number one. If I now rotate the joystick to zoom out, yes, something is happening on that camera. And can I also maneuver the camera with pan tilt? I have no clue what is going on. Let's just move this to the side. This uh, this camera is uh, pointing somewhere in the cloud. So what can we do here? To see, we are in the showroom at the sky. Oh, 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 there we go. Okay, then we just need to see if we can get our find our way back here to normal life. Yep. Okay. Let's just let let's just keep it here. It's always difficult to manage robotic cameras with a little bit of latency, but let's just we are here to check that the camera selector works, right? So I select camera number one now, and when I'm pulling the joystick, we should see that this camera in this side is actually responding to the commands that I'm sending. We'll also have to add the camera selector choice for the presets, right? Now, um, we cheated a little bit to show the camera selector by using the pin mode. So I'll just get back to a more, more normal operation. Now the presets layer is active here and we have all our presets. So I, uh, I will actually just pick one of these, press edit. Uh, we'll go up here and then we can remove selection in this case. So let's just quickly do that and then go back to select device core or select, uh, yeah, that choose camera select. It's still preset recall. It is one and we can't submit this here. All right. And then what I want now is to shift drag across them, batch edit this like we see here. And then you can see the parameter here, apparently having the variable integrated, we can now copy that to the others. So this will now make the preset recall respond to that as we want. I also want to have these presets reflect the um, uh, actually reflect the the name of the camera instead of just saying preset. I think that would be pretty cool and nice and useful. So uh, let's just pick this one again. And then uh, we'll um, show more. And then inside of the editor for the title, we'll edit this one. And then we'll add a dynamic value. First of all, I'll type in cam and then space add dynamic value and then we'll just add this for the camera select like that okay let's see if that works so it says camera number one now and if we go into game mode we can change over to the camera select to pick camera number two and then let's go back to this one it says camera number two now i hope you can see this so cam two ah, it's a little bit far away from my navigation button okay so cam two, but then I change back to cam number one and now it says camera number one. So this is great. And all we need to do is to apply this to the other. So once again, we could do this little batch edit, then go in here in this nice table, we see it all. And then if we place our cursor here and we can then copy this one all the way down, it is going to pick up the camera number that we have selected for the others. There you go. Now you have seen how we can dynamically involve a variable in selecting which device we are talking to. And that's a fundamental concept inside of Reactor.